Josh, you're a buyer of Zoom. This is one of these, you know, shelled out companies out there. <laughs> yeah, this, this is on a this is on a very tight leash. Um, but I, I bought some on Friday. Uh, our mutual friend, Melissa, uh, Eric Jackson, did my podcast. And he was talking mm -hmm. about something that not a lot of people are, which is that when you look at the tech, uh, the tech boom and bust of 2000, for example, um, and, and to lesser extents, other uh, moments like these in the past, where you had companies w that were, quote unquote, burning cash, meaning making big investments, spending a lot of money, uh, not producing a lot of earnings, and really being looked at by investors suddenly like, oh, I can't invest in that. It's a, it's a money pit. And then all of a sudden, they start to show you that those investments they had been making are starting to pay off. So he's looking for opportunities like that. Eric's a, a longtime tech investor. This is his third or fourth cycle, um, like it is mine. And one of the names that had been on my radar that I think may end up fitting into that category is Zoom. And it, yes, it's still not classically cheap, but this company lost like 70, 80% of its market cap. So now you look at their last quarterly earnings report. This is one of the few stocks that actually went up after earnings. And I think it spent so long trying to find a bottom. Keep in mind, this is one of those names that topped in February 21. It spent a year and a half looking for a bottom. Maybe it hasn't found the bottom, but I think the bottom in early May so far seems to be a tradable low. So, look, it's, I may be out of it tomorrow, given the volatility in these markets. I'm trailing it with a stop just below 100. I don't think I'm taking a lot of risk compared to what the upside could be if a rally like this is sustainable. And it's weird. A lot of these uh, ARC-type names, while the markets got much worse last week, didn't make fresh lows. A lot of them made their lows in May. The Chinese Internet stocks, for, for God's sake, they didn't make new lows versus the March lows. So there are areas of the market that have been so completely bombed out and are so out of the question, like nobody would even consider that they're mm -hmm. not going to get worse. And maybe those have an interesting tradable uh, bottom here. So I I'm, not, I'm not sleeping well at night, but I'm long. It's the optimistic view of the bombed out stocks make, not making new lows. <laughs> you just came up, by the way, with the newest segment, I think, for the halftime report, and I'm just a temp here. But um, short leash trade seems to be a good one. Uh, John, what do you make of Josh's That's short it. leash trade? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do the same sort of thing, Melissa, yeah. not with Zoom right now, but I do the same sort of thing with call spreads because then you define your risk on entry. The risk here is, of course, that on any given day, um, a significant investment bank says, oh, I'm taking them to uh, a sell from neutral or something like that, and the stock gaps down 20 bucks. If you've got an option spread on, Melissa, as you and I know, you've got a very limited. So if you want a short leash trade, an option spread is a great short leash trade because you've defined your risk to the downside, and yet you know what your potential reward is to the upside. Whereas when you just buy a stock, like Josh said, um, you don't sleep so well. I sleep like a baby. And I don't mean I cry all night and wet the bed. I, I sleep like a baby because of these <laughs> spreads, because I don't have to worry about what's going on in the market. You can always count on John to take it there. <laughs>